It always amazes me about the tabernacle of David, just how, it, you know, if you read through Leviticus, how many uh, rituals and things that had to be done, even to get to the holy place, right. the holy of holies. And here in David's tabernacle, the, the ark is right there. I mean, and it's just a whole different paradigm. And it's like you're thinking, okay, how do you guys, how did David get away with all, I mean, get away with doing things the way that they did? But but, uh, you know, I know they didn't have all of the things that they needed to be able to do the other. Uh, there was uh, some of the equipment and the things yeah. was not there with them. But he, he really brought a whole different paradigm to the children of Israel. I mean, it, yes, he did. I mean they, where it wasn't just only these Levites are the only ones who and only once a year do they get to come into the Holy of Holies. Right. David, God used David to bring that right out in the open. I mean, it just floors me, you know, as you read it. Yeah. And what's funny is the, is the people of Israel, it's notoriously through history, they've always kind of wanted their will, haven't they? They've always oh, wanted yeah. to impose their will on God. Yeah. Give us a king. Yeah. Jesus, are you going to set up the kingdom on earth now? All, all that stuff. And it says that David, God chose David because he had a heart mm -hmm. after him, after God. Yeah. And, and, and it was amazing to see the favor that David had in his, on his life. Was David perfect? No. Are we perfect? No. Right. I mean, David, I mean, you read some of the Psalms. He, he almost seemed bipolar at times. He, yes. was, he was totally happy and then totally just, you know, Depressed. train wrecked the oh, next no, and the, you know, know. two verses later. And a guy like that, and, you know, he, he was a murderer and an adulterer, but God still said he had a heart after him. And the, the, the key point was David was like, after he would do stupid stuff, he would just say, what have I done? You know, right. what have I done? God created me a clean heart. And because David had that heart, he had favor with God. Yeah. And that's how we are. If we can just, you know, we're not perfect, but if we can just have that heart of being like, hey, I'm not perfect, God, but my heart is after you. I want to know you. I want to have a relationship with you. God can bring that favor in our, in our life as well. And it's amazing to see what, what God's done, uh, you know, in our lives because of that. Yeah, you bring up an interesting point because probably if you and I were going to choose somebody that had a heart after God, we probably wouldn't have chose David. I mean, he wouldn't have been no. the guy that we would have thought. We would have more chosen him as the one who was trying to do good but failed miserably and right. didn't make it, you know. But that God, the way that God's perception of him, is just absolutely amazing to me. Yeah. David. the guy he chose. David, um... Man, he was he was a brave kid, man. He yeah. was a kid. And he's fighting giants and and just and just serving. I mean, he never expected to be anybody, you know. And 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 that, I think that would be that's a, such a testimony for everybody. You know, you may think that you're that you're gonna, just gonna be mediocre for your whole life, but God right. has a great purpose and a great plan for you. And and just to know that, hey, the purposes of God, man, are in your life. Yeah. And man, just ask God to, 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 to reveal those things to you. And, yeah. and, 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 and greatness can be in small things even too. So. Yeah. David saw himself as a shepherd and God saw him as a king. And I know. so it's Isn't just amazing. I mean, it's just, exactly. yeah, it is. It's phenomenal how that God used him in that way. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit more about this tabernacle of David because this is the, you believe, and, and, and I do I agree with you that this is the move of what God is doing today. He's restoring this within the church and has been restoring it for quite a while. Right. Where do you see contemporary trends of worship going right now and you know, what do you see happening? You get out and about to different places. Right. How do you see that applying? And then maybe we can segue into talking a little bit about some prophetic worship that's going sure. on too. Sure. There are they're all walks of uh, worship music. I mean, I could I could take a shotgun and right. shoot at the wall, and we wouldn't even be able to touch. You know, yeah. uh, what all God's doing. But I'll tell you what I'm really seeing. What I'm really seeing is again, churches embracing the movement of worship. Yeah. Some people, uh, whether it's passion CDs, Chris Tomlin, or, you know, what you hear on the radio, or or it's so far as to say um, it's Jason Upton or somebody like right. that that's really prophetic. Uh, there are all different churches that are embracing that. And um, when I go places, I try to, I don't know what I'm getting into a lot of times when you go to a church. So <laughs> you you just don't know what they're about. You want to you be respectful. You want to be sure. all things to all men again. So when I go into places, I'll do things that I know that are on the radio and the town that they're in, like right. oh, Blessed Be Your Name, those kind of songs. And those kind of trends um, are definitely happening. One cool thing that is happening uh, in, in worship music is, is it's getting it's getting 
more modern in right. a sense. Like it is, it's it's starting to sound. And don't take this the wrong way. It's starting to sound more like the world's music. Yeah. Now we all know this, man. The gift and calling of God is, is irrevocable. It's out repentance. There are right. people in the world that are gifted by God to do what they do. Now, right. are they using that gift for God? No. Right. But they're talented people. Right. And to be able to take that and the imprint on that, and to even take the influence of just seeing the the extreme creativity that's in the world and seeing the, now the extreme creativity that's happening that's God given I mean God as a creator of God that God is putting into His church is amazing yeah. because now kids are not having to go out into the world to get the music that they're that that, that they identify with their culture they're getting it in the church, right. which is amazing, you know, the, and, and to be a part of that, to be uh, in some small way, uh, giving that to the younger generation is amazing. Yeah. And um, we love that. And it's it, it, what's even cool is this, people are redoing older songs. People are redoing hymns. I mean, I do, a, every night I do a cover of, a, of Jesus Paid It All. Yeah. I mean, it's a more rock and roll version, sure. but man, you and people, older folks, they can connect to that. They know the lyrics to that song for sure. And now the younger generation loves that song because it's a it's a modern song to them. Right. And you see a lot of that. You see a lot of, um, you see, when I go to places, I'm also trying to bring something prophetic to what we're doing. A lot of, maybe your, some of your viewers may not know what that is. I'm just trying to bring something spontaneous mm -hmm. from the Lord to people. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to um, facilitate a place where they can hear the voice of the Lord speak to them. Yeah, and maybe that's through me. Maybe that's through a message that I speak. Maybe it's just through a statement that that God just drops into my spirit that I just sing for a few minutes, and it's just the same statement over and over again. You just never know what God's going to say, and maybe it's stopping and literally prophesying to people. Um, and uh, I just try to do do what I had the liberty to do right. in the church that I'm in, whatever church I'm in, obviously. Yeah. And uh, God is a God of honor and he respects that. And he always shows up uh, if you just operate in that in that model. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, uh, as you were talking about that, I was rem remembering back that within the last, probably the last 10 years, that we've really seen a transition that has moved from uh, more of the entertainment aspect of worship to more of prophetic, more right. spontaneous. Right. And I mean, across the board, not, you know, that's happening with a right. lot of, a uh, lot of album artists are more now they're all, you know, if you go to their concerts, they're definitely much more spontaneous yeah. and ministry minded instead of just get up and these are the, like you, you know, these are the 10 songs that I'm going to sing, yeah. you know? Yeah. You know, when, when Christian music, when contemporary Christian music first started, like folks like Second Chapter of Acts, Keith Green, right. Phil Kagey, DeGarmo and Keeve, and those, you know, Larry Norman, they were ministers. They saw themselves as ministers. Yes. They went to places. I mean, Keith Green used to say this, I hope you didn't come see come to see me tonight because all I'm going to give you is Jesus. Yeah. I mean, he was pretty hardcore in his He's message. Radical, you know, definitely. he was a radical guy. Yeah. And... Um, and through the 80s and the 90s, it just sort of progressed into being music. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. It was it was progressing. It was becoming more of an industry right. and less about a ministry. But it's it, it's there is a generation of people that are rising up and saying, hey, listen, um, I want to minister to people. That's my heart. I mean, yeah. it's great to be on the radio. It's great for people to know my name, Jeremy Horn, and know my album. But it's right. more important for them to know who the real star is yeah. in Jesus, you know. And I want to go into places, and, 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 and I think a lot of people now these days in music want to go into places, and they want to touch the heart of God. Yes. And they want to touch the heart of God uh, and, and God's people yeah. and, and give them Jesus, you know. Um, I think that has a lot to do with this. The Bible says that God is enthroned on the praises of his people. And I think that his own people have come to realize that. Yeah. that when we, and, and, and that word praise in the Greek actually means a spontaneous song. Yeah. And so when you begin to open up your heart and to sing something spontaneous to God, mm -hmm. that's where God will sit down on your life. Yeah. And you, we all know this, the presence of God can be addictive, man. You, God touches your life. You oh, yeah. want to know, know that and feel that again. And that's why this movement has been taking place because people are hungry. Yeah. They want to experience Jesus. They don't just want to hear songs. Yeah. They want it right. to mean something to them. They right. want it to touch their life. They want it to draw them closer to something greater than themselves.